Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So the video that I have for you guys today is yet another case that involves intimate partner violence. So if that's a subject that's especially sensitive to you, then this video may not be for you. I know we've been talking about this a lot the past few weeks on my channel, but it's such an important issue to me and it's so important that I talk with you guys about it. So that's why I've been covering these cases. But before we get into the video, I just wanted to go ahead and say a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Glasses usa.com glassesusa.com is a regular sponsor here on my channel and it's for a really good reason as you guys have probably heard me say a million times by now ever since i started using glassesusa.com my life has gotten so much easier now if you're anything like me then you know how expensive it can be and how much of a hassle it can be to get your eyeglasses directly from your eye doctor but it's now so much easier and so much more affordable with glassesusa.com by cutting out the middleman glassesusa.com offers prescription eyeglasses for up to 70% off of retail prices. You can now shop for your prescription glasses online without ever leaving your home, all at affordable prices. GlassesUSA.com offers over 4,000 styles of glasses and sunglasses, including in-home brands like Audido, which is the ones I'm wearing right now, as well as what these ones are, and then like Amelia E, which is what these ones are, and then Muse, which is what these ones are. They also have designer brands like Ray-Ban, Gucci, Oakley, and so many more. You can find any style and color that you can imagine as well as specialty glasses like kids glasses, sports glasses, safety glasses, and so many more. Also with GlassesUSA.com, you can add any prescription to almost any pair of frames including sunglasses and blue light blocking glasses. They also have this really cool try on feature where you put in a picture of yourself and you see how the glasses will actually look on you before you spend the money to buy them. And of course, the best part is the price point. A complete pair of glasses starts at only $30 and free basic prescription lenses are included with every frame. It's so easy. All you do is enter your prescription online, place your order, and that's it. You're done. Standard shipping is free on all orders no matter how much you spend. And if for whatever reason you aren't happy with your order, you have 14 days to return it for a refund, exchange, or 100% store credit. No hassle, no questions asked. The exciting news is that by clicking the link in the description box below, my subscribers can get 65% off of their first pair, which is such an amazing deal considering that they're already so affordable. And if you like the glasses that I'm wearing or any of the other pairs that I've shown, those will also be linked down below. So again, make sure you go ahead and click the link down in the description box below to get 65% off of your first pair of glasses. Thank you again to GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring today's video. And as always, I will be taking off the glasses for the rest of the video because I know there is a glare. But either way, with all of that being said, today we are going to be discussing the murder of Tawny Bard. Tawny Bard was born on June 17th, 1993 to her parents, Donna Anderson and Casey Bard, and she lived in Holiday, which is right outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. She was described as a very friendly and outgoing person. She had so many friends who absolutely loved her. Her parents described her as being a natural leader and a very hard worker. She had enrolled at the Salt Lake Community College to continue her education and worked at Arnold Machinery in the meantime to make some money and support herself. She worked really hard at her job because she knew that hard work was the only way that she was going to live out her dreams, and she had big aspirations for herself. One day, she wanted to become a famous singer and move to California and watch the palm trees sway in the wind and the ocean waves roll on the sand. Now, Tawny was just like any other teenager, and she liked partying with friends, and she did start experimenting with weed. So, in June of 2010, 17-year-old Tawny had just been driving around and hanging out with friends. They had been smoking weed that day and had some paraphernalia in the car. Well, as they were driving, they got pulled over by an officer who then smelled the weed in their car and then subsequently searched the car. They ended up finding a bong and weed in the car. Now, even though all of the friends were partaking in using the drug, her friends were older than her, therefore they would face a harsher punishment than her. So Tawny took full responsibility for the entire thing, said that everything belonged to her, so she got charged with possession of a controlled substance, which is a class B misdemeanor. So because of this, she was sent to 90 days in a juvenile treatment facility. This really scared her and her parents because while she was just a normal teenager who maybe got into trouble once in a while, just as so many other teens her age do, the people People that were in the facility with her were much harsher offenders. She was with people who sold heroin, had assault charges, and everything in between.
between. She was terrified, and so was her family. But while there, she met a girl named Victoria Mendoza, and the two hit it off immediately. Now, Victoria had her own troubled background, and she had been in and out of juvie more than once. And she did have quite the rough upbringing. So her family moved to the States from Mexico, and they didn't have a lot of money, so they lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and they just barely scraped by. Then, when Victoria was only 10 years old, her father took his own life. So she, in her own words, went a bit crazy, and she ran away from home, started getting into fights, which is what led her to be in and out of juvie. She had also been going through a lot of very difficult things when her and Tawny met. She had just found out that her mother had been diagnosed with cancer, and she took the news very, very hard, just as anybody would. She was really sad that she was stuck in juvie and couldn't be there for her mother while she was fighting for her life. Now, Victoria sort of took Tawny under her wing and made her feel safe while in the facility. Tawny and Victoria grew extremely close during their time there, and they bonded over their shared love for writing and creating music. So, ultimately, the two did start a relationship. At one point, Tawny's mother came to visit her at the juvenile center, and that is when she came out to her mother and was so excited to introduce her to Victoria. Her mother was completely accepting of her, and she was actually really excited that she had met someone in juvie who was sort of protecting her and who she had bonded with. Then, by August of 2010, Tawny was released. It was about a month later before Victoria was released in September of 2010. But the two had such a close relationship that during the month that they were apart, they were constantly writing each other love letters. And they promised each other that they would not see anybody else while they were apart. Once Victoria got out, Tawny was so excited to introduce her to everyone in her family. Her father's knee-jerk reaction upon meeting her was a little bit surprised because the two seemed like polar opposites. Tawny was very outgoing and sweet and flirty, while Victoria was more tough and rough around the edges. But very quickly, Victoria grew on Tawny's family, and they took in Victoria with open arms. Everything with them seemed to be going amazingly. Tawny's parents even once said that they loved Victoria so much that they considered her as basically their own daughter. Now, Tawny and Victoria were quite literally glued at the hip. They wanted to spend every waking moment together. They would hang out with Tawny's friends together, and her friends said that they could just see that the two had such an amazing connection. And they seemed like they were always in sync with one another, and they would go out dancing together. They were constantly posting pictures of each other together, and they seemed like they had the most perfect and amazing relationship. But as we hear in so many of these cases, the two did have their problems. They argued, a lot. Victoria had a lot of problems with being jealous and insecure, and Tawny had her jealous side as well. The two were very codependent, and it seems like Victoria was jealous of basically every other relationship that Tawny had in her life. She was always wondering if Tawny was going to go back to liking guys and was constantly worried about her cheating on her. It seemed like pretty much everybody that Tawny talked to, Victoria was threatened by. Victoria would see a guy commenting on Tawny's social social media and would accuse Tawny of cheating on her with this guy and would always just assume the worst of everybody in Tawny's life. It actually got so bad that Victoria went and cheated on Tawny with one of Tawny's best friends. She just basically said that this was to get back at her for allegedly cheating on her first, but I will say that as far as I have seen, I don't think Tawny ever actually cheated. It seemed like Victoria was just so paranoid that she convinced herself that Tawny was cheating, that she felt like she had to get back at her. And of course, after finding out that Victoria had cheated, Tawny was absolutely crushed. She was totally heartbroken and actually broke up with her. But then Victoria had posted a public apology video to her on YouTube. She wanted everybody to know just how sorry she was. She said that she's sorry, that she loves her, and would do absolutely anything that it took to get her back. Okay. So, I'm really confused on where to start right now, and um, I have a lot of things on my mind that I want to say, but I, I keep going blank because I know that I'm recording myself, and I know that I'm doing, like, I know that I'm on video and stuff, but I'm going to just start from where I feel like I need to start and end where I need to end. First, I want to say is I'm sorry for hurting you and cheating on you with your best friend, and your best friend is a slut and I don't like her. She's gross. 
or I can give a fuck less. Alright, so, I'm, this video is like an apology to you, and the girl I'm talking about is Tawny, and I'm trying to get her back to be with me so I can keep her again and for her to give me another chance, because I'm in love with her and I love her and I want her back, and I'll do anything I have to do to show her that I can be a better girlfriend. <laughs> Okay, well, we met in Arctic, and I liked you, and I wanted to get to know you and stuff, and one of the letters you wrote me in Arctic, I read all the time because it meant a lot to me, and it's probably, like, one of my favorite letters I have from you or whatever, but, uh, see, I like when you wrote me that note, and if you think about it, you really meant that. And just look at all the things that and everything we've been through when we first met each other in our program and then when we got out. Besides the bullshit that I did and all the sh little notes that you've wrote me and all this shit that you got me and all that shit means a lot to me and I don't want to lose you at all. Like, I really, really, really do love you and I'm really sorry for everything I did and I'm just wanting to have you back in my arms again and treat you better than I ever treated any other girl before. And I'm sure in the hell I'm, don't give a f what anyone says about this video. You guys can f off and go suck because I want to be with somebody and I'm going to do everything in my power to get her back instead of letting her walk free and letting her go to somebody else. That's not what I want. I want her with me. So I'm going to do whatever I have to do in my power, but until then, I'm not single. I'm waiting for somebody actually, but, see, you made me this letter, and you made me this one, see, look, all of our pictures because we love each other, when you didn't make that for nothing, just because you're bored, you made it for a reason, and I want you back a lot, and I miss you a lot, and I just want to ask you if you'll be my girlfriend again, and I love you so much. And you tell me you love me more than the stars times 93. Well, I love you more than the planets and the stars around the world, around Mars, around Pluto, back to Mars, back to the Earth, back to the moon, of times 195. I love you. So if you'll please be my girlfriend, I'll be really happy. Okay? Surprisingly, Tani saw this and was touched by her apology and she forgave her. So she took her back. Now everyone around her was very surprised that she ended up taking her back despite being cheated on. But either way after this, the two continued their whirlwind romance for a few more years. By June of 2012, Victoria's mother unfortunately lost her battle with cancer and passed away. Again, this was incredibly difficult for Victoria to have to deal with and she really didn't have anywhere to go. So Donna, Tawny's mother, took her in and said that she could live with them for however long she needed and she even helped her get a job as a security guard. This was Victoria's first job and Tawny's family was so proud of her. They actually helped pay to get some of her more visible tattoos removed and helped her clean up her appearance to get this job. Tawny's dad also went out and bought the uniform that she needed. Tawny's family and friends all loved Victoria and they wanted to do whatever they could to make her feel loved and accepted and welcome and help her become the best version of herself possible. The relationship in the family got so close that Victoria even started calling Donna mom. Again, the two were so excited to be so close all the time and to be living together, but behind closed doors, their constant arguing and bickering turned into more physical violence. Victoria became more and more possessive over Tawny and it got to the point where she didn't even want to let Tawny out of her sight. She went as far as hacking into Tawny's messages and social medias to see what she was doing in private. And Tawny was getting so frustrated with all of this that she would fight right back. The two both seemed to have pretty bad tempers and a lot of their fights would result in both of them hitting each other. Overall, they had a very tumultuous relationship. Donna was aware of all of the fighting and bickering that was going on, but she really didn't know what to do. Donna could see how Victoria was following Tawny around and just how unhealthy their relationship was getting. But Donna just sort of figured that the two were probably just spending too much time together. She thought that once Victoria got
got working more once they had spent some time apart, that their relationship would get a lot better, which is totally understandable. I know that a lot of us can probably relate that when you spend too much time with one person day in and day out, the fighting becomes more frequent and sometimes you just need some healthy time apart from each other. Spending every waking moment with someone is never good even if you have the most healthy and perfect relationship. Everybody needs a little bit of time apart from each other and going to work and hanging out with friends once in a while is a perfect way to do that. So again, Donna thought that Victoria getting a job and starting to work was just what they needed and thought that this would make the relationship so much healthier. However, there was one incident where the couple was not at home. I'm not exactly sure where they were, but the two were hanging out somewhere outside of the home and the two got into an argument and Victoria punched Tawny in the face so hard that her lip was bleeding profusely and she actually knocked one of her teeth out. When they got home and Tawny looked like she very obviously had just gotten hurt, Donna suspected that Victoria was the one who did this to her, but Tawny begged her not to call police. When her dad Casey found out about this, the two told them that Tawny had just gotten into a fight with other girls. They said that these girls came up to her and then punched her and then just ran off. Again, Donna knew that this probably was Victoria's doing, but I almost feel like they just loved Victoria so much that even Donna tried convincing herself of this other story. And as far as I know, Casey did not know at any point that Victoria could even have the possibility of being responsible. He had no idea. He says that if he knew that this relationship would not have continued, but there's really no way he could have known because nobody told him. Victoria had the family completely convinced, but Tawny's friends actually did know what was going on. She confided in her friends that she was afraid and they thought that she was going to leave her, but she didn't. The two continued posting pictures together and making it look to everybody on the outside that everything between them was just absolutely perfect. So on October 17th, 2014, Tawny and Victoria went over to Ogden, Utah to hang out with some of Tawny's friends, which included Tawny's best friend, Lacey. But even as they were all hanging out and trying to have a good time, her friends could tell that there was a bit of tension between Tawny and Victoria. I'm not exactly sure what set her off, but something happened that made Victoria very upset. So she went off into the bathroom and just kind of hung out in there for a while. According to Lacey, it seemed like Victoria could tell that Tawny was starting to pull away from her. She's very happy when she's with her friends and to someone who is jealous and possessive as Victoria, that is very threatening. People like her don't want their partner to be happy or close with anybody but them. Victoria seemed to know that she was starting to lose control over Tawny and she did not like that. So after coming out of the bathroom, Victoria asked Tawny to leave. Tawny was hesitant saying that she was having a good time but Victoria said that she had work in the morning and that they needed to leave. So they left and they actually did end up driving Lacey home. Once they dropped Lacey off, the two said their goodbyes. Tawny and Lacey said that they loved each other and the two pulled away. To Lacey, this was just a normal day. The two were bickering and fighting just as normal, but this wouldn't end up being a normal day and Lacey would never see her best friend ever again. Shortly after this, by 1 a.m. on October 18th, Ogden police received a phone call from someone who wanted to report a murder. The caller said that they wanted to report the murder of a girl named Tawny and this caller ended up being Victoria's sister, which I will get more into in just a minute. When police arrived to the scene, they saw Victoria sitting in the driver's seat. She had blood all over her clothes and her hands, and she said that her girlfriend was sitting in the car. Police said that Victoria was very clearly shaken up and panicked. Police asked her if there was a weapon in the car, and Victoria admitted that her knife was in the car. When police searched the car, they found that Tawny was inside, and she was absolutely covered in blood. It was obvious that something extremely violent had happened inside of that car. And unfortunately, when they examined Tawny, they found that she was already dead and there was nothing that they could do to save her. Of course, they took Victoria in right away and they questioned her about everything. And in that moment, police said that they realized that Victoria 
Victoria truly did not understand the extent of what she did to Tawny. Police said that Victoria just kept asking them if Tawny was okay, saying that she didn't mean to hurt her, she just wanted to scare her. She didn't even know how many times she ended up stabbing her. That next day, Lacey realized that she hadn't heard from Tawny that entire night. So, she called Donna to ask her if Tawny had ever gotten home that night, and that's when she realized that she hadn't. Of course, Donna immediately panicked and asked Lacey what was going on, and that is when she told her that she thinks that Victoria did something horrible to Tawny. Shortly after that, by 10 a.m. on October 18th, police showed up to Donna's house to tell her what happened to Tawny. Now, a lot of the details of what exactly happened has been reported differently depending on the source that you look at. So, some of these details may be a little bit off, and if you go and research this case yourself, some things might be reported differently than what I'm saying in the video, but I'm sort of just going off of what I've seen the most. So, turns out the two had started arguing and gotten into a fight when they were driving along Interstate 15 after dropping off Lacey. Again, it's been reported differently, but from what I understand, I think Tawny was driving while Victoria was in the passenger seat. Then, their argument started escalating, and again, this has been reported differently. Some articles say that they pulled into a parking lot after the argument started escalating, while others said that this was happening all as they were driving. But either way, this argument turned physical, and Tawny slapped Victoria and pulled her hair, and Victoria just absolutely lost control. So, Victoria took out her four-inch pocket knife and just started stabbing Tawny over and over and over again. Upon later autopsy testing, turns out Tawny was stabbed a total of 46 times to her hands, her forearms, her face, her head, her neck, her chest, and even her ears. Then, after stabbing her, it's believed that Victoria moved Tawny over to the passenger seat of the car and then drove the car from where they were parked to a different location to a church in Ogden. Again, I'm not exactly sure because it's been reported differently, so I'm not sure if they went straight to that church parking lot, but what I've seen the most is that they were parked in a different parking lot when the stabbing actually occurred, and then after moving Tawny over to the passenger seat, Victoria got in the driver's seat and then drove the car over to this church. After she parked at the church, she called her sister Cindy to tell her everything that just happened. Victoria asked her sister to come over to the church that they had gone to growing up at 2484 East Avenue in West Ogden, Utah. At first, her sister didn't know what to think, and she didn't think that she was serious, but she quickly realized that there was a lot of urgency behind her voice, and she quickly realized that this was serious, so she rushed over to the church and saw that Tawny was dead inside the car, and she immediately called 911. So, Victoria was taken in and charged with first-degree felony murder. At the preliminary hearing, she pled not guilty and had actually threatened to take her own life. So, police started gathering their evidence, and they built up a pretty solid case against her. So, ultimately, Victoria did end up pleading guilty to charges of first-degree murder. When she appeared in court, she said, quote, I understand why they're hurt. I'm hurt as well. I have no excuse for what I've done, and that's why I pled guilty. I did knock out her tooth, but her family tried to help cover it from Casey. I don't have anything else to say. I'm in the wrong here. I know I'm the monster. A lot of sources that I read left that middle part out, basically only reporting that she pled guilty and called herself a monster. But what they don't report is that she just had to slide in that thing about how her family helped cover up for her. So basically, they're making her look like that she's so sorry and that she knows she's a monster and she pled guilty and all of this. But what they didn't report is how she just had to slide in this little thing about how Tawny's family helped cover for her. So to me, that's basically her saying, yeah, she's the monster, she's guilty, but the family is also guilty. I don't know, but I don't think she felt bad and it's a little bit frustrating that all of the sources that you'll read will basically just say that she pled guilty and called herself the monster. A lot of sources don't even bring up how she originally pled not guilty. So, that's kind of just a small example of why you need to watch the actual court proceedings for yourself before making a judgment on what people are reporting. But either way, Donna said that during
during this entire thing, Victoria didn't even look at her. She didn't cry once. She just really didn't seem like she felt bad for any of this. Again, I personally think that the only reason she pled guilty is because she knew that there was no way she was going to get out of this. I don't think she pled guilty because she just felt bad. I don't think her conscience was suddenly coming into play when she pled guilty. I definitely think that she just knew she couldn't get out of it. During the victim impact statements, Tawny's aunt said, quote, jealousy is the devil. It will kill. It's Vicky's fault. She stabbed her and killed her. Why should she get one free day to be with the trees in the sky when Tawny cannot? Victoria's demeanor throughout this entire thing really hurt Tawny's family. They could not believe that somebody that they took in, treated as their own, and loved and cared for so much would just turn around and murder Tawny and then go on to show no remorse or emotion at the hearing. It's just absolutely disgraceful. So she was handed a sentence of 16 years to life for the murder. The Board of Pardons determined that Victoria would not get a chance for parole until after serving 24 years in prison. Tawny's family continues to talk about just how much regret they have for not doing more to help Tawny. Donna said that for the longest time, it just seems like two girls fighting and bickering and they would always make up. Even after she suspected that Victoria was the one who knocked Tani's tooth out, she thought that the two had made up and that something like this would never happen again. She said that her biggest regret is not seeing this as a sign that Victoria is capable of doing so much more. Casey, her father, has come out to talk about just how important it is to talk to family members about domestic violence and report things even if they're not 100% sure that something's going on. Even if you just suspect that something might be happening, it's best to try and help the situation rather than just assume that it's nothing. This is something that they had to learn in the hardest way possible. He also came out and said that he regrets not recognizing the red flags sooner. Again, the entire family, including Tawny's parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, all of them loved Victoria and none of them thought that she was even capable of doing anything like this to Tawny. And those are the reasons that I wanted to cover this case. I know that I've been talking about domestic abuse a lot on this channel for the past few weeks, but the more that I look into these cases, the more I feel the need to shine a light on these horrific situations. The last two cases of domestic violence that I've covered on this channel have involved situations of men hurting women. Obviously, one of them was is more alleged and it wasn't as more physical violence, but a lot of times when we think of these cases, we think of the men being the aggressor. But what people need to realize is that domestic violence can happen in any relationship and anybody can be the perpetrator no matter their gender or sexual orientation. I think it's really important to highlight what Donna said about this. I'm not blaming her whatsoever and I never want her or anybody else to think that she is an any way at fault for any of this. In fact, I think that she's a truly amazing and wonderful woman for taking in Victoria and caring about her so deeply. Not a lot of parents would do that and that is just so amazing that she went so above and beyond to be so kind and accepting towards a young woman who truly needed it. But I do think it's important to point out what she said about her thinking that this was just two girls fighting. Of course, to some people, that doesn't seem very very life-threatening. I fought with my sisters and even had physical fights with them. We've chased each other around, hit each other, all kinds of stuff. And parents never think that anything else beyond that will happen. But being a female does not mean that you are incapable of violence. And just because a relationship involves two women doesn't mean that there's no possibility of violence. And that is what I wanted to highlight by doing this video. It's so important to recognize that intimate partner violence can happen to anyone and by anyone, male or female. Yes, it's more common for male to be the abuser. That's just a statistical fact. But if someone is exhibiting signs of domestic abuse, whether they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, or straight, something should be done. Talk to that person. Let them know that you're a safe place for them and take what they have to say seriously. And if someone does confide in you that they're afraid, you shouldn't just assume that they're gonna leave that person. Again, I'm not pointing fingers at absolutely anybody in this situation, but just as a general statement, if someone is with somebody and they express that they're afraid, then go on to just stay with that person and post as if everything is normal. 
don't assume everything is better just because they stayed. Because again, we know that things like this are a vicious cycle. They want people on the outside to think that everything is perfect. They want to keep posting everything amazing that happens in their relationship because of course, they're not going to post their fights. They're not going to post the disturbing things that are going on behind closed doors. Nobody would. And especially if someone is trying to control someone and control the narrative, you might think that this is just the most amazing person ever, but a lot of times that's exactly what they want you to think. Abusers will oftentimes go out of their way to make themselves look like this amazing person to the victim's family and friends to make them think that, hey, this person could never hurt my loved one. They would never do anything to hurt them. So even if I think that there might be some signs, there's probably nothing going on because I just love this person so much. That's exactly what they want you to think and that's what they want the victim to think too. They want them to think that everything's going to be better and that if they just stay with them a little bit longer, that things will get perfect and that they'll be the perfect partner that they've always wanted. But it always comes to a point where they realize that nothing's going to change. They've been trying to convince you of this narrative for so, so long that after nothing changes for enough time, the victim starts realizing that this isn't going to change. I don't want to be stuck in this anymore and I feel happy when I'm with my friends. I feel accepted when I'm with them and I don't feel that way with my partner. I think it's really, really good that Tawny didn't let herself be pulled away from her friends. I think it's really good for her that she still maintained those relationships and especially with her parents. I think that's really good that she was able to maintain those relationships and that she fought back and that she thought, hey, Victoria, I'm not going to let you take my friends away from me, but unfortunately, I think that's also what caused Victoria to be so jealous. I think that's what caused her to lose complete control. I think, again, that she saw her being happy with her friends that day and was really upset with something probably very small that she did and realized that I might not get her back. She is happy and I'm not. And if I can't be happy with Tawny, if Tawny can't only be happy with me, then she's not going to be happy with anybody. Again, this is just yet another case where the abuser could tell that they were losing control over the victim. And I know I'm going to get a lot of comments about how Tawny was just as much of an abuser as Victoria because she was hitting back. She was fighting back and she was dishing out her own. And obviously, physical violence is never okay. The times that Tawny hit Victoria, those situations are not okay just because Victoria went and did something worse. But at the end of the day, Tawny is the victim victim here. I do think that Victoria was very manipulative. I think she was trying to control Tawny and Victoria pretty literally inserted herself into Tawny's entire life, made her parents love her, made her friends love her. And I feel like that can be very, very isolating. Even if she's still close with her friends and her family, I think that Tawny might have gotten to a point where she realized like, everybody loves Victoria and they all see this great thing in her. I should be seeing that too. I don't want to get rid of Victoria if all my friends and family love her so much. I don't want them to have anything against me because I took Victoria away from them. Again, this is just me sort of rambling at this point, but I do want to point out just how this entire cycle can go. Tawny started to confide in friends what was happening and she started to pull away. So before she had the chance to leave, Victoria ended her life. And again, she made sure that if she couldn't have Tana, nobody could. So that is where I'm going to end today's video. I do apologize for all the rambling I did and trying to, you know, dissect the relationship, but I do think that it's very, very important to highlight. I think it's important to highlight in any type of relationship that this type of thing can happen. And I think it's really important to highlight to you the psychological aspects that can go on in these cases as well. Because again, a lot of people will question, well, why didn't they just leave this person? Why did they stay for so long, especially after she punched her in the face? That's on her. But I want people to understand that it's so much deeper than that. There's so much going on than what you see on the surface. And that is why these things even happen. That's why this cycle just keeps going for so many people. Again, I know that this video and a couple of my past videos have been really tough to sit through, but they're so important to talk about. I know that I keep bringing up domestic violence. I know I keep reiterating these points to you guys, but 
I cannot express how important this is to me. I cannot express how important it is for you to keep an eye out for your friends and your loved ones and to make them know that you are a safe place for them and that you will help them if they need it. You don't know just how much you can help someone who's suffering in silence just by being a shoulder to cry on. But either way, again, I know I just said that, but that is where I'm actually going to end today's video. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to send those over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!